All right, guys, for the first time live, not only on YouTube, but also on my Twitter. I don't know even know what that looks like. We got not one, but two Best Ball Mania champions. We're going to do a draft today. Let's do it. All right, guys, I'm Liam Murphy. We have Pat Corain, the $2 million man, the man who won Best Ball Mania 3. Uh, since we last talked to Pat, he launched his website, Legendary Upside. A link to that is in the YouTube description below. Pat, how has that been going? Tell the people. It's been it's going been. really good. Yeah. Um, I've got a bunch of content out right now on the rookies. Um just put out a post on Zay Flowers, Quentin Johnston. No, I'm sorry, Zay Flowers, um, Jalen Hyatt, uh, and uh, <laughs> Jalen Hyatt and Josh Downs. I already have stuff out on Quentin Johnston, JSN, and Jordan Addison. Uh, I've got more running back stuff in the works, but I also just launched the Legendary Upside podcast. Did my first episode of that show that was out this morning with JJ Zacharyson. Uh, in the newsletter post announcing that, I said, hey, you know, I, I know not everyone's got a, a free hour and 20 minutes to just bang out the podcast. So I said, look, you should probably draft some Izzy Abanacanda before his pro day today. And guess what? He ran a 4-3. He ran a 4-3. So he's going to be shooting up I've boards. I've heard it as un an unofficial 4-4-1. Four, four, like, I think the 4-3 was... The four, okay, the 4-3 was from four, three was the social media post. And then it's looking closer to... All right, 4-4-1. Four, four, we'll take it. 41 and yeah. <laughs> 41 inch vertical, 10 foot, eight inch broad jump. Those those numbers we don't need the official. Those are just you lock those in right when they happen. So he's very athletic. I think uh I, I thought it was the, like why why would he not run good. at the combine though? Like this is supposed to be one of the most like I've been drafting him because I've heard he's like kind of like a Roheem Moster type comp. Yeah. Um, as with every rookie, if they don't get the draft capital in the actual draft, it's like, all right, see you later. Um, but I just found it a little bizarre, you know, that he wouldn't want to show out at the combine, which is a bigger media event, unless he's like injured or something. I don't know why either. Uh, it, and it was disappointing because a number of these running backs decided not to work out, um, at the combine, you know, we didn't get a 40 on Kendra Miller, which I really would have liked. Uh, there, there are a couple other guys. It didn't work out. So I, I don't know why it didn't work out. And you do trust the combine number more for sure. But this is a crowded kind of like there's four running backs who I think are locked into day three draft cap day two, you know, or better draft capital. Those being Bijan, Jamar Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs, Zach Charbonnet and Devin A. Chain. After that, it's like a big old glut of guys and you don't know where they're going to get drafted. So this could potentially help uh, Van Kanda rise to the top of that group and maybe sneak into back in around three or something. And what would the draft capital be for you to be out on a player? Like round four, I think is like a normal, like, okay, if you, at least round four, we're drafting them post post round four in the real NFL draft is when it gets a little bit more hairy. Is that, is that right? Or yeah, I, post round three. I think round five is is doable at running back if you if you like the profile. Well, things are changing. Like like NFL yeah. teams seem to be like wisening up, and so maybe we're going to see that in the actual draft about like you can you can just draft these guys whenever and, and plug and play them. Yeah, round six starts to get very shaky. Round seven is very shaky, um, and then some of these guys like I like Evan Hall, but I, I'm worried he's going to go undrafted. He's very athletic, so I'm hoping that I've been drafting that guy a ton. <laughs> I, I've I've mixed him in in the 20th round. Um, you have, you have to scroll way down, which is probably good because it's probably just like you and three other people that are drafting him. No, he's getting up there. I mean, is I don't he? know, All man. Right, uh, the other day, Davis came on this show. We did a draft, and he touted Nathaniel Dell, who had an ADP of 240. He's so tiny. Which, when you have an ADP of 240, it means. Like you're literally almost never being drafted because 240 is just like the lowest ADP they put on a player, I think. 
Um, right. But but after that show, I did a couple drafts, and I noticed his ADP was now two thirty seven, which that means like a sizable pe- like people are like, all right, sure, mixing them in there. Um, let's talk about your big boards. Are you going to max this contest? How many do you have in? <laughs> no, I'm not going to max it because how could I possibly max it? I mean, I Pete literally is posting regret YouTube shorts about, <laughs> about doing uh, too many slow drafts. I'm not going down that path, obviously. It, it is uh, at, uh, wait, wait, it is at 96.9%. That's a good number right now. I was worried we weren't, we weren't going to be able to draft this draft. You should probably register us right now for this draft. because <laughs> Well, I'm a little worried because I'm supposed to draft with Ian Harrett hard it's at 4 p.m today too and it would be a big bummer right. that is yeah. uh, if we're do you, you know, still but, have your little boards left can you guys do a little board uh little board is only 67 percent filled so we can chase the you still haven't gotten your two in uh no i was i wow, would look at that i would not enter that at all too good uh, for the little board well you know pat it's, once you like won three dollars you money, not- it's a three dollar two max. You're not doing it. Once you want a certain amount of money, it's it's kind of like a uh, a self excluding for the good of the people. Like, oh do, wow! Look do do, do we need? Do you need to win the puppy one, or would you rather see someone else in the community? Because I'm a community guy here, Pat. But you you could draw your oh, own line in the sand. You're such a community guy that you had to deposit on underdog.com. That's why we were underdogfantasy.com. That's why we were late to the show, by the way, is because <laughs> Liam had to put more money on the site that he's pulled a million dollars out of. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do not have $2 million sitting on underdogfantasy.com. <laughs> hey, I, don't, I didn't have to deposit today, okay? <laughs> um, also, things are changing on this channel. You, of course, have 50% equity in the team, but I am sending people like, ah, like, oh. This is like a very funny time for you to break up because you're trying, it's like, this is supposed to be legally did, binding. Did, I cut, did I, I cut out? Cut. Yeah. It's like, no, I said, what I said was you have 50% equity unless we win and then I get the money. That's what happened. What what were you saying? No, no, no. You have 50% equity if we get in the semifinals or finals or, you know, really the finals. But last year, it was annoying come January. I sent everyone their $17.50 for their min caches. And what's this? I didn't get any back. And I know I drafted some playoff teams on some streams with other people. (laughs) So I think everyone else rightfully was like, I'm not doing this. And me trying to bind by my word here was like, okay, I, I said 50% equity. Here's your $17. Didn't get any, didn't even get like a thank you from anyone or anything like that. So like I've concluded I was free rolled there. I'm not getting yeah. those mint cashes and I just don't want to send out uh, a bunch of mint cash <laughs> invites. Listen, yeah. Davis has been trying to come up with he's been brainstorming ideas for me to to become a to do a real heel turn here and become a villain in the fantasy space. I think hunting pe- hunting people down for my $17 when we made the semifinals uh would be would be a pretty good way to become a villain. Uh yeah, I, I don't mind if you don't send me uh if we advance out of our first group and then lose, you don't have to send me the money. Yeah, but of course, if we if we ship the 200k right now, which we're going to try uh, yeah, of course we're gonna. We gonna to you have a you have a hundred k. So all right. which, I like you that. Know. All right, what do you want to do here, Pat? Two million dollar man. Uh, I'm good with Diggs. I assume you like Diggs. Yeah, I like Diggs, Kelsey, AJ Brown. I'm good with like any of any of those guys. Mini tier break before the rest of these guys. I did yesterday. Of? Yesterday, I I don't always do this, but sometimes I enter a draft with just like a, I'm going to do this strategy to just like get this in my portfolio. Like yeah. I will adjust if some real values fall. But yesterday I did my first four or so uh, hyper fragile starts with running backs, just going like RB, RB, RB. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know, but you were in one of the drafts. Um, I, I saw on Pete's Discord later that someone posted that they were in a draft with us and I've, I've been multi-tabling these bad boys. Me too. I've been doing like three or four at a time. So I'm not like looking at names. I'm at 75, uh, but that's meant like I've done several sessions of doing like 10 or so drafts at the same uh, time. 
I don't do 10 at the same time. I don't even know how you do that. I'm only at 56 because I I try to max at three. After about three, I'm not having a good time. At three, if I'm in the mood, I enjoy three. Are you doing on your phone or are you doing yeah, it on phone? Because phone? Um, I still like to think about what I'm going to do the next round. And then like, if I get to four, I feel like I have like dementia or something because I can't. I'm like, wait, what's this draft? I have no recollection of anything that's happened. And then I'll start to think I need to do the stack, but that's a different draft. It just starts to mess with me. So for me, I can comfortably do 10. Like I can be even like God, search Twitter. That's crazy. In the meantime, you're searching Twitter with 10. Yeah, like literally, like, I, I'm like looking at him, like, okay, four picks away. I'm like, I'll scroll some Twitter oh because God. there's downtime. Um, do you remember who you have when you pull that up? Like, I have to look at who I have every time. I'll look at the uh, real quick. Who do you want to go here? We can go. I think on the... I like Allen given that the receivers are gone. Okay, let's do it. Um, and you never know, like, sometimes you get in some weird drafts where someone just like takes three quarterbacks to start and really like starts to screw people like yeah. going early quarterback. You can be the beneficiary of if a bunch of people want to like double dip, I don't know, round eight plus quarterbacks, all of a sudden you can like push your quarterback to and take advantage of that and not be like, fuck, I got to take Jimmy G or otherwise right. I have no quarterback points. Right. Um, and you still might not. <laughs> um, I have started, you know, I think we should tell the people that getting different at the top of drafts is something you should get in the habit of trying to do when just to just so that, you know, like the combination of AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, Chris Olave is a lot lower than the combination of Chase, Metcalf, Olave, something like that. But so I've also started mixing in a running back or two here, which I don't want to do as much because the wide receiver kind of dries up. But like if you are not taking CMC at three and you had to take another running back and the idea of getting different, who are you taking? And I'll tell you who I usually do it with. I mean, I guess I would do it with JT, but I don't, I've never done that taking a running back at three. I actually don't know about, I mean, I think getting different makes some sense, but I feel like I'm in these rooms right now where I don't feel like the ADP is as trustworthy kind of throughout the draft. And, and there's like a lot of volatility with stuff. I feel like I'm just going to draft like different teams than other people. Like I'm just yes, going to but... end up with like pretty di maybe not different starts necessarily, but different overall teams. You are, but the way fantasy football works is sometimes, and we've seen this, literally the past three winners, you need a first or second round player or just an individual player to go off. And like, you know, Herzig was not winning without Camara. Right. Uh, I was not winning without Chase. You were not winning without Eckler. These right. are, and so if, at, you know, if 95% of people have Chase Higgins Metcalf and you're the only one with AJ Brown, you know, whatever, like, I, the, is the guy well, you're taking Bijan? I've been taking Saquon. I think Saquon is mm -hmm. a much safer bet than Bijan at the current moment in time. Like, I I like Bijan. So I a lot. think if you're doing it, shouldn't you be taking JT or Bijan, who like really never get back? Saquon, like there, like here's a Tyreek Saquon. You know, it That's, doesn't uh, even it doesn't even matter though because it's not. They don't have Saquon plus round two and three players. They have like people. There's there's Tyreek. I guess, Saquon but I mean, there. like the two v two they're getting on you is pretty good. Like they're getting Does a Tyreek. Does Metcalf ever fall to the fourth round? Like that's what you know. No, no. So it's just getting different combinations there. And yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, real quick, let's make a pick. We can go. We can do Hopkins. We go Hopkins, do Hopkins and play for the double. Like hey, I've been I've been doing that. Uh, I kind of like that, man. And and in this room, we we see the wide receiver thirst here. We see you. Yeah, you're, you're we, we do see the uh, – you don't always see Saquon and Eckler fall to where they are. Um, but, yeah, a clear indicator when Devonta Smith goes pick 15 and Olave goes pick 17, uh, let's not get locked out at wide out. Let's not get locked out at wide receiver. And we already did our, our one – 
uh, diversion or whatever. And so, you know, don't want to, don't want to get carried away. Yeah. Um, what were we just saying about the getting different? The, the only, th- the only thing I don't like about getting different is if like I get different and then Alfred gets different and then Dobby gets different. All of a sudden Baldwin can just draft at like ADP and he's getting different, but he's getting different in a way that you can't manufacture on your own. Like you don't want to be giving people chase uh, AJ Brown starts in the name of getting different. Like if a bunch of people do it in your draft, but the truth is almost no one does that, including even me late, like even like around round 10, 11, all the time. I'm just like, especially when I'm multi-tabling, I'm just looking at a couple picks of ADP. But when I'm like single tabling, I will just like scroll down sometimes and be like, I want this fucking player right now. I like uh, that the term we generally we used to say just drafting. When I'm doing a fantasy draft, now it's single tabling <laughs> because you're used to drafting 10 in a row, 10 not in a row, sorry, 10 at the same time. Uh, to, to be clear, I am working right now, Pat, and I'm not someone who works a lot, but like with Best Ball Mania, I like to enjoy that. That's a single one here. A single one there. Oh yeah, like that's a slow drip. But when a contest goes from ninety three percent filled yesterday to ninety seven percent filled, I'm like, all right, I guess I might as well fucking go to work, quote unquote. Do I exactly want to draft seventy five best ball teams right now? No. Will I? Do you try? think that like REV has cratered over the? Because I've done the same thing, but it's a bunch of people like me and you panic drafting like ten teams, and then. First of all, we're going to make mistakes. I drafted Desmond Ritter by accident in the as my fourth quarterback today. Um, Let's pause real quick. You want to go Mark? You want I to love go- Mark Andrews, and I feel Mark. like we can justify it. Um, I'm uh, done with Mark. Um, I also like Watson there. How do you – I personally think Hawkinson might be my tight end too. How are you feeling about that? I like Andrews as my tight end too. I don't think – you know, when you're drafting one of these guys – I think it's highly preferable that they can be the engine of their offense. And Mark Andrews can and is the engine of the Ravens passing offense. TJ Hawkinson just is not. He needs he literally needs an injury for that to happen. He has no realistic path. No chance be of being of the, the engine, offense. but could definitely be the second weapon there. Now <clears throat> is the second weapon there, yeah. Unless the Vikings, I don't know, get JSN or Bijan or someone. <clears throat> sorry but the problem with andrews is uh there's a chance that he's the engine of i don't know some garbage quarterback you know right. not not lamar jackson what's your what's your take on the lamar situation i put out a poll yesterday uh it was about like i think it was like roughly 25 percent in the poll thought that he sits out next year and the other percent was playing. I guess I don't really see how sitting out helps him because he doesn't, he just would have to deal with the same franchise tag level because he doesn't accrue a year, right? So, well, he's he just like the- screwing the Ravens and like just trying to like play chicken of like, to, to me, you sit out a year because you're like, I'm not risking Injury. only getting 30 million. I want 200. Yeah. But if you play, if you play on the tag, then the tag escalates the following year. So it, but you, you still don't do, have that long-term security. You like don't have the long-term long security. security. I know he does, but his his leverage actually increases in the following season because he then gets, you know, he gets the chance. That's, that's how I feel. Like if Lamar tears injury. an ACL, he could be OBJ real quick at the quarterback position. I agree with you. That's That's the reason not to do it. But there's like... I think a pretty strong incentive to to play. I think he plays. Um, do you think he plays for the Ravens? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like Lockett. I, I like, like Lockett a lot. Uh, we took Andrews. We can't be taking Kittle. We totally can, but I don't think don't, so. We don't have so, to. So you and I are both elite tight end guys, but in, in week 17, I don't want to go to war with Kittle and Andrews. I'm hoping I'm hoping one guy has a huge week. The odds that both guys have these blow up tight end weeks in the same week, I mean, it's certainly possible, but it's not what I want to be betting on. And I've already took my advance rates, my chances of getting to week 17, which are crazy, crazy low to start with. 
I've now made much more difficult with the I don't I don't really like bully tight end in this this type of format. I uh what if Kittle scores like 40 week 16 and now you have 1% on Mark Andrews? Sure. Yeah, I mean that and that's it, you know, you're kind of like cherry picking or whatever, but I don't think that's like a crazy impossible thing. So I get it. At the same time, it's like you know, if you have if Kittle scores 40, you're going to have probably low like 1% on someone. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, like but you're, you're going to have 1% owned at along. the most variant position, sure. tight end. Yeah, that, that's a good argument. It's just that once you get to week 17, I think your upside is a little bit hurt by that move. And I don't I don't like building in a way that's that's capping my upside with my early round picks. It's the same reason why, like, if I think if you take, and I've seen people do this, like they'll take, oh, here we go, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. I'm sorry, this is a, a you know high volume drafter with the red badge, but I think you're dead. I think that team's just straight up dead. You, how do you win Week 17 with with your second and third round pick? Only one of them's hitting your lineup. Well, it really depends how efficient the later rounds are at the I other guess. positions, and, and and you can make the same argument. Mahomes goes off in Week 17, then you had to have Hurts in yeah. Week 17. But like, great, you had to have Hurts. Are you the only Hurts team because your third round pick or second round pick is not in your lineup? So it's well, not in, it's not ideal. In general, quarterback is the position we want to do it the least at. Not that I have not not that I never do it because quarterbacks typically do not separate from their peers. Like occasionally you will get a, the guy to go 40 and the rest of the field goes 20. Okay, now you really separated. You have a 20 point gap. Um, but usually like you have a guy who goes 30, so does someone else. You know? Yeah, that's not the like other you're thing the, too. You're not the only one getting those points. But if you have a tight end go 30, the rest of the field can literally score five. A hundred percent. You know, and that happened oh, for me to win. I take Burks in like too. every draft. I like Hollywood a lot. Okay, let's and do that. In, in this room, I think it makes sense. We need re- we need the receiver pretty bad. Um, yeah, and I think Hollywood is like, is he not the same lesson of Amari Cooper from last year? Where Mari Cooper discounted because of Brissett. Still good yeah. at football. Was a really and good player. I tell you why Marquise Brown is a good pick. We think, see, this is what, if you're if you're doing the analyst thing, here's what you do. You, you do something without thinking about why you're doing it. And then later you're like, you know why this was smart? <laughs> this thing I didn't think of until afterwards, which is that we have DeAndre Hopkins paired with Josh Allen. We're betting that he gets traded to the Bills. Guess who that helps? Marquise Brown, alpha oh. in Arizona with Hopkins gone. I mean, that's some positive correlation built in. Well, it's a it's a double win. Not only do we yeah. have a bit of a division stack here with Seattle and Arizona, but even if Hopkins remains a Cardinal, which seems very unlikely, now we're just stacking them. Now we have a double stack. Yeah, we could take a 15th round Kyler Murray or something. I don't want to do that. I'm I'm playing this as we got the double stack and uh when that trade happens we win twice. That's well it's a it's a have your cake and eat it too type situation. It is, it is. Uh and you know Hopkins could go to the Chiefs. Boom. That's a good yeah, spot too. That's that's great for us. Now we have Let's a talk about stack. Trey Lance. I have been drafting Trey Lance like he is the starter. And you know, I said this on Twitter that like if I'm the 49, I think that like people are like really overreacting to what uh, Lynch said, and I think it's a little bit of. I don't think they're overreacting. I think they're reacting late to a situation that was like that. He said, like, what to me was obvious. Like, they're not fully committed to him. They signed Sam Darnold, which I, you know, Sam Darnold. Yeah, I think that's motivational shit for him. Which uh, motivational like trying to light a fire under your guy. To We're me, trying to have a backup plan, is what it is. To that's how I took it. To me, it's you. You know what you have in Purdy. Purdy is, I don't know, maybe 25% better than Jimmy G, hopefully, or something like that, right? Trey Lance could be a Josh Allen, a Hertz, a whatever. So, um, do you I love Swift? Joe Mixon. Mixon. I think Mixon is a smash right now. His The charges were dropped against him. He's He's playing, and I've been reading, no one in Cincinnati thinks he's getting cut. I think that's all smoke, too. So... I, I the Rams does give us the division stack. It's uh, gotta, to me, it's got to be Mixon. 
Okay, he's, he's he's the Josh Jacobs pick. I he, here's why I am out on Mixon right now. One is uh, the Chargers can. I, I was reading about this literally this morning, inspired by uh, Leone's tweet. The Chargers can be refiled at literally any time. Um, okay. What I read in the article, in one article at least, I do not pretend to be an expert. This article could be wrong. Apparently, allegedly, Joe Mixon pulls up. Some some girl flips him off in traffic. He pulls up beside her in a car, points a gun at her, and says, I should kill you right now or something. This happened. The police officer then issues a warrant for his arrest, but he did not ask his supervisors, which you don't need to do, but in a high-profile case, I guess the supervisors want you to. So the supervisors dropped it because they don't feel like dealing with this or something. Um, and to me, Joe Mixon is about to be 27. He, the NFL, I think there's a literal chance of like a decent chance that Joe Mixon does not play next year. If before an NFL playoff game, you are so self-centered and stupid that you are going to point a gun at someone before they played the bills. He did this like you, your decision-making is terrible. The Bengals are up against the cap. The guy is about to be 27. He's a replaceable talent. So, yes, he's not been cut yet. A big potential of what could be happening is they are waiting for this shit to be refiled, and now they get to void his contract due to due to conduct detriment right. to the team. All right. That's a, it's some important context. I wish you had uh, fully laid that out before we took him. Well, I didn't have the time. You were just saying mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. Well, you know, Liam, if you just were, you just got that point a little quicker, maybe wouldn't have taken mixing, you know? Well, that's actually, that's actually really interesting. Cause what I saw was that the, the officer go was, Bateman, or do you want to yeah, go? Yeah, Bateman's or... great. Okay. Bateman's great. You, um, you go ahead. We'll, we'll let this click down. For what us. I saw is uh, that the officer had been disciplined. Because he um, didn't ask a supervisor. Because he right. So that that so when I was like, okay, charges dropped, officer disciplined. I was like, oh man, okay. But you're right. I I, I pull up an article. It says it says the um, the victim was in agreement with the decision to dismiss, with the possibility that charge against Mixon could be reintroduced at any time. So you are right about that part, which is and if the Bengals want concerning. the charge introduced, newsflash to people out here, put on a tinfoil hat, whatever. If the Bengals organization wants that, they're going to tell that player, that woman, hey, file those charges. Here's 50K or something, you know? Like, if they want to avoid that contract of $7 million to Joe Mixon or whatever they owe. Um, sorry, go ahead, Pat. No, no, I I just, uh, that is that is pretty interesting. My thing with Mixon outside of this has been, you know, kind of what Leone's saying. P. Ryan's gone, and... Which I thought he, was bizarre, but P. Ryan, like P. Ryan, I'm excited about in Denver. Played well. Well, I, apparently Sean Payton made a big pitch to him of like, "Come here, you're gonna play a bunch until Javante's back." Uh, so you know, maybe they try to bring him back and it didn't work. But Mixon's like, he's he didn't have a great season last year. His yards per hour though is still pretty good. He's kind of always been what he is. Like his success rates kind was kind of whatever. His rush yards are expected were kind of whatever. Um, Breakaway percentage was down a bit last year, but like he's he's like kind of is who he is. I've always faded him hard because he goes like in the you know, it's going with like the one two turn last year. Yeah, he was, was a like, very easy fade last year. He's such an easy fade. He's not that good, but he's also like not done. He just is Joe Mixon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he no, is he's, the, he's a good he's, runner of the football. He had a 50 point fantasy game last year. Yeah. He's the same guy. Like he's not there's there's lots of guys in the player pool where I'm like, yeah, I think he might be done. But like, you know, I've like heard, Alvin like, Kamara might be like done. Yeah, but I've heard like the the Josh Jacobs comp thrown around. Like we're trying to find Joe Mixon is nothing like that to me. Josh Jacobs is twenty four. Well, I mean, Josh Jacobs was entering what year? He's still on his rookie deal. The point is that Joe Mixon is not. So like that. Yeah, that he was still on his rookie year. That's true. He was in year four last year. Yeah. Yeah, but I, and, you know, the Josh Jacobs thing is basically like guy who we used to value extremely highly and now we're like he hasn't declined in skill level it's just that he was always overrated in skill right just jacobs was always getting you know early on he's getting drafted like he's this superstar running back even last year he wasn't a superstar running back he's just an incredible value for um 
the 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 cost you got him at. But like, you know, I think in PPR, what he was like 18, 19 points per game or something, he still wasn't like he would have definitely been a win at a second round price tag, but it wouldn't have been nearly the smash. Gabe Davis at, at running back. If he didn't if you take away his 50 point game, I'm sure those averages drop a little bit. Uh same with Gabe. No, I mean Jacobs. Oh, G- Jacobs. Um I was talking about Mixon. But yeah, I don't know. Like for me in the big board. He was 19.4 last a, year. Which like, is very good. A, obviously, I don't want to root for Mixon at all. And, you know, sure. it, when it's close on a player, I will. What about Penny? You want to root for Penny? I do like to root for Penny a lot. Oh, let's root for Penny. And I don't want to, like, come off as, like, I'm some soapbox opera guy. Like, uh, you know, I recognize there's bad players in the NFL that I draft. But, I don't know. It's pretty documented with Joe Mixon. He's a bad dude. Uh, I don't want to yeah. be root, rooting for him on my fantasy teams. Unless I think he's, a, like, if he's a great pick, Yes, I will draft him. But as it stands right now, you know, like, could he not be Ray Rice out of the NFL where it's like, look, dude, you really did that before a playoff game? You, you know, after your past shit, like, what is going on in your head? Like, goodbye. You're not talented enough. Yeah, based on what, like, my perception of the NFL, I don't think that's, that this would create that type of situation. Yeah, unlikely. I agree, but. I don't know, some some chance. And then, like, you know, if he ends up with the Cardinals, how are you feeling about him? That would be a really weird move for the Cardinals, but do you think he's better than James Conner? Well, I don't know. I, th- I think it just drops him into that, like, it, is he going to, is he the clear 1A? If he was, let's say he's on the Cardinals today. They keep James or, or pick another bad offense. Like choose your choice. I don't know. No, I mean Cardinals are fine. But like, yeah. where where would you be interested in drafting him if he was on the Cardinals? Um, probably in this this range, the round nine. Like clearly after Swift, clearly after Acres. Those are two guys I legitimately are optimistic yeah. about. Well, that's that's why I like drafting him in the seventh. Is because, and I might even say a little lower. Like I might say you take him because. Connor's going in the ninth right now and he, you know, presumably has the backfield to himself, but like, let's say he's worth like an 11th round pick, you know, it's like kind of like, it's like, okay. Or a late 10th, like Damian Harris versus Joe Mixon. Maybe you go Mixon, you know, but it's not like, yeah, he, necessarily he's, not, he's never going to be in a 20th round pick. I get, I get exactly. what you're saying. So, okay. So you, you lose, you, we lost three rounds of value. Now he's a 10th round value, you know, took him in the seventh, but I do think that, there are pretty realistic paths to where he's like a fourth to fifth round guy who I'm never touching, but that's where the market thinks he's, he's valued. And that's actually like a bigger, that's a much bigger value gain than a value loss. Um, There's depth. Who do you, you want to go running back? You want to go wide out here? I like Hyatt as a potential Bills Hyatt's pick. Cool. Uh, I like AJ Dillon. Both those are fine. Who else? There's like Boyd, there's Dawson Knox, but he might make it back to us. I'm I'm good with uh, either guy. All right, we'll go Hyatt this time. He's a guy I've been taking with the idea that the Bills could take him around that pick. I think uh, that's sharp. I mean, he's, I think he's a very risky type of like real life wide receiver pro- like prospect profile, but he has pretty good odds of landing with a great offense. You know, sneaks into the very back end of the first round. I think that's very plausible. Yeah. Uh, so, and the other thing that Bills would be just an incredible landing spot for him because big red flag is that he ran out of the slot. Well, the Bills would actually maybe play him in the slot and have him do the same deep threat stuff, but out of the slot. You know, that would that'd be pretty massive. So, if if he's like on a more kind of two wide receiver set focused team. Like the Titans, that's it. Bad. Could get it could get real bad. Yeah, because he he like he's a smaller guy. Uh, I just I like re- I really worry about like is this he actually going to beat corners? You know, he's only four four in in terms of his forty. I heard so. that his tape is so weird um, that like he was just like not covered like a bunch of times in college. Like yeah, because running he's running out of the slot. So there's like yeah. no one on him. You know what I mean? Like he's like. He's like a deep threat who just gets like free release out of the slot. And he's just like, all right, I'm open. Like, that's not how the NFL works. You have to be on the outside. You don't have to actually like 
beat hey, well, a corner. If Diggs and Hopkins are there, maybe that is how it works. Well, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but he's in this amazing situation where I, I'm not taking a lot of them because I'm worried about that. But then it's like, well, hang on. What if he's on the Bills? What if he's on the Chiefs? Like, you know, yeah, maybe like, he is. He, they're being creative with an amazing quarterback. Like, he could be awesome. Just to state the obvious to people, big board drafting is entirely different than post NFL draft drafting where like we literally have no idea where the rookies go right now we're just fabricating scenarios and like like if Hyatt goes to the Titans in round three uh okay now he's like a 18th round pick or something 16th round pick you know yeah maybe maybe not even um (laughs) it'd be bad yeah let's say the hot let's say Hopkins does go to the Bills I see some people talk about Gabe Davis would be the slot like big slot I think you throw Diggs in the slot and you let Davis. Yeah, I, I do too. Play outside. Yeah, I do too. That's what makes sense to me. Gabe Davis in the slot. I, I mean, he does play in the slot uh, snaps, so we could take Knox to stack it up. Robinson's a falling value right now. Yeah, let's let's get Knox and be done. Okay, I do that a lot. Knox has my yeah. tight end too. Literally, probably fifty percent of the time. Um, <laughs> because after Knox, it's like Cole Komet. I, I have a lot of Dulcich, and I have a lot of Taysom Hill. Uh, yeah. Well, I, the thing about – I like Juwan a lot, too. You know, like mm. – I like Ju, – Ju, I mean, Juwan scored seven touchdowns last year. Yeah, Juwan's solid. I, I don't uh, tend to take Juwan as much as I take Taysom, and then I'm like, well, I don't need Juwan. I, lo- I literally like both of them. It's not going to surprise yeah. like, um, And I like Chig. And I li- but like, I don't like Chig that much. Michael Mayer, kind of a gadgety guy. Like this bit. group is like, okay, we're taking real darts now. Mayer's not that big of a dart, but he is a rookie. Yeah, I think you have to go three tight ends if you take Mayer. Yeah. Um, what's your read on Trey McBride versus Ertz? Uh, I think Ertz is completely done and is coming off a torn ACL. I don't understand why anyone would draft him, and I like Trey McBride. Okay. I don't think I, I have offensive concerns about the Cardinals, so I don't take them a lot, but I do take them some, sometimes. Well, it was also like, it seemed a bit of the, like the cliff philosophy was like, we use the tight end here. Mm-hmm. Like Max Williams got targets. Ertz got targets. McBride eventually got some targets in one game at least. So he's gone. So we don't know if the card, like the new guy is going to do that. And I don't know if yeah. that was, I don't know if that's like, Kyler wants that or Cliff wants that. Um, let's get a running back here. I like Foreman. I like Gibson. I like Gainwell. We already have. I like, I like Gibson the most of these guys. Yeah, me too. We already have Penny. So not going. Not going Gainwell. Getting a little division stack. Who knows? Maybe they trade touchdowns. Um, What were we just talking about before that? Before our pick? Um. <laughs> we were talking about Trey McBride, but they oh, have yeah. Waldron, right? I, I don't know. Is he going to be running like an Andy Reid type of system? I mean, he comes from Philly, but he's a defensive guy. So I'm not sure what his offensive approach is going to be. Who's the OC there? Because I, my point there, the, the reason I bring that up is that most of the Reid systems use the tight end. You know, like Peterson uses the tight end. They use the tight end in Philly. Uh, the Colts have used the tight end actually when they were with Frank Reich, but they just used like a million tight ends. So it was useless yeah. for us, but they did use the tight end position a lot. Um, Nagy used the tight end a little bit. So I feel like having that, having a read guy wouldn't be the worst thing for McBride, but I don't know. Yeah. And I think tight end is both out. quarterback and coach influence. Like some coaches are like, no, oh, I yeah. can block. And some quarterbacks just, target the middle of the field or wherever the hell the tight end runs more. Um, Drew okay. Petzig is the, is the offensive coordinator. He's I want to have, I want to have an OC show, like a offensive coordinator show and be like trying to identify the, the spot, the, the coaches who could go full boomer on us and be like, we're running the football. Uh, well, there's a, there's a one one there. A well, but like one there. people were shocked by this by Arthur Smith. Um, so I like uh, I like Richardson. Oh, I love Richardson. I still I'm still drafting a ton of Richardson. I draft I draft a lot of him too. He's the same thing as Trey Lance to me. Like he's the same thing. That that's why. Well, but I want them both because it's like if Trey is playing, 
you know, I don't know. It could be Trey who scores 30. It could be Richardson. It could. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I've actually did. I break, I've, I've got the screenshot equity of no Trey Lance. And then I, I did draft a couple of Trey Lance teams. Well, he's falling now. I got Trey Lance. Yeah. Cause he's falling. Yeah. In uh, he pin he went one fifteen in this draft. I got Trey Lance at one forty yesterday. Wow, that's nice. And I think I think he honestly should slot into this Richardson, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. Group. That's how I feel. Yeah, and but. and so my thing with Lance is like, I'm I'm gonna be drafting a bunch of best ball all off season, right? Not just on underdog on DraftKings, whatever. Like I'm gonna have plenty of best ball teams. These like. 60 teams I get in here are not the be all end all of my season. No. So at the 10th round, but you did post I, that Richardson closing line value. Well, I mean, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get your screenshots in, but, but I, so in the 10, I don't like the price just straight up. Don't like the price. And then the prices behind it are great and maybe aren't going to stick around. Richardson might be an overpriced eighth round pick or something. Once he gets drafted fourth. You know, I feel the same way about Kyler. Like Kyler should go in this group too. To me, that he should be a little later. He should be in the group with Richardson. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. Too. Like, I agree. Like if yeah. if if Richardson starts, he should go way ahead of Kyler if Kyler doesn't play until oh, yes. maybe week eight. And what Minshew's in Indianapolis? So how bad does Richardson have to be to not be starting over Gardner Minshew pretty quickly? I mean, Gardner Minshew, fine player, but like he's not a. I, like, is there any risk that Richardson gets redshirted? There is some risk. It's. I like Shark. I like Gallup. I like Shark a lot. I think he's kind of a. He, he did. Uh, how do we feel about this ankle surgery? Hmm. This well, is like ready for like, part of OTAs. Well, let's not freak out. I think there's some risk that he there's some starts risk. slow. Um, yeah, it's just like yeah, any, in this any risk that Richardson gets redshirted. Yeah, I think there is some risk he gets redshirted. It's correlated with risk that he falls in the draft, right? Because I don't think the Colts are redshirting Richardson. Maybe they do like a Ravens plan with Lamar where like he doesn't play until the second half of the year or something. But with a Josh Allen team, who cares? But they had Joe Flacco. Right. Like that, right? They even had Joe Flacco. So it's like that. I think the odds of that are pretty low with the Colts. But, the but if he goes to the it, Lions. Right? The 49ers did it with Jimmy G over Trey. Much better team. The 49ers had a much better team. Yeah. Right. They have playoff, not playoff, Super Bowl ambitions. Yep. And stacked roster. The Colts aren't like that at all. The Colts no, were a disaster right. last year. So there's no way the Colts do that. The I, I could see Seattle doing it. I could see the Lions definitely doing it. But he the Lions fall. should go get a quarterback because they they're not going to be drafting in the top uh, ten for a long time potentially with this this dynasty you know yeah no I agree with you um I, but I guess so Richardson he's probably not going one or two right but I think it's like there's a, at least a tiny chance it happens I think there's a chance he goes one or two for sure like if people are like Bryce Young ceiling is Tua. Why would you take that over when you're, you know? Okay, so if he goes one or two, he's not getting redshirted. One because he just went one or two. Now I know that I know that Lance went three and got redshirted, but you got, again, I think that was like kind of a unique situation with how good the team was. The Houston Texans are not in a position to be like, oh man, we got to prioritize our chances this year. We got a redshirt quarter, right? The, the Carolina Panthers too, like like yeah, you know, like no one's going to buy tickets to go see Davis Mills again. No one is seeing Dave. Yeah. No one's going in person to watch Davis Mills quarterback team. That's no. not how it works. So, yeah, I think both those teams, he's starting basically out of the gate, unless he's a total disaster. And even then, he's, pro they're, he's probably still getting a bunch of starts. What do we got? We need a running back, right? What do we got there? Yeah. Sean uh, Tucker's good. Tucker? I like Tucker. Tucker, uh, I was not drafting at all because he used to go like pick 120 or something. Same. This is, this is, much I think better. I I think literally today I saw some pro day numbers from him that were pretty good too. He was medically red flagged 
And I think at the very oh, is he beginning, the guy who posted his his shit to social media? He posted some good shit to social media, but no one was like literally no one was there. And he's like not allowed to work out for teams because of a medical red flag. It also just like wasn't true. He said he ran like a four three and I saw someone yeah. be like, that's a four five or, you know. Yeah, yeah. So he's like a little risky, obviously, because he has a medical red flag right now. But like, who knows what it is? He's. I get like he did post video of himself like doing all the stuff. So I don't think he's like immobile. You know what I mean? Like the, he's not like dealing with a major injury. Um, the recheck is at the beginning of April. So it's a, it'll be after the big board closes. So I, I like the idea of you get some 15th round Tucker. Everyone else is getting like 12th round Tucker, you know, and now it turns out he's totally fine. And his his statistical profile is really good. So. I, I I like mixing him in now after fading him a lot early. The way I've been drafting, I've been ending up with a bunch of rookie running backs, and I'm just accepting that my big boards, like my ROI could literally be like 0%. Like if all these yeah. like running back, these rookies don't see the field, you know, the Roshan Johnsons, the whatever, like the Evan Holes, like yeah, they're late round picks, but I'm also just taking like a quantity of these dudes and being like, hopefully I'm capturing some star here. Um I so. think I think it's a good – this is the draft class. Like one thing that's tough with best ball and why it's going to be, I think, a fun enterprise for years is because like all of this stuff is so highly dependent on that year's player pool. You know, and I think, you know, stuff like sh should we be drafting running backs in rounds, you know, 16 through 20? It's like this year, yeah, we definitely should because there's a bunch of rookie running backs who have like – legitimate chances of going at the end of day two who have legitimate chances of breaking out as fourth or fifth round picks. They have really strong profiles. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Like this is the, you know, the same reason, like why I'm back in on the rookie quarterbacks because these rookie quarterbacks, we're going to have, you know, three guys drafted in the top five, probably it's a very and different class cheap. than last year. They're very cheap. And they're right cheap. Now. They're cheap because rookie quarterback has not been a winning proposition for several years because and we had that hugely disappointing class that the trevor lawrence class really disappointed us we had a terrible well, Joe Burrow was like a 14th round class. pick um yeah 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 but then the following year we got hyped and it burned us so now we're we're out um you know honestly i draft a lot of leonard fournette i have been too just being like he is playing i think he's playing football uh here's he here's the other thing i like about leonard fournette he he's going he's he's angling to go for the to the Chiefs or something. He's, he's not going to sit around older and, than Joe Mixon. Yeah, but he's like, I, my impression of Fournette, right? He goes, he gets like cut he by the Jags. Jarek McKinnon. He could be Jarek McKinnon. He goes, gets cut by the Jags. He gets signed by the Bucks. He's like over at Tom Brady's house the next day, taking pictures, buddying up with Tom Brady, like. The guy knows what he's doing. Like, I don't think he's going to – he's not going to go play for some total bottom feeder team that already has an established guy. Yeah. Um, what about Jarek McKinnon? Where, like, he's a guy who, like, certain days I'm drafting, I'm just like, today I'm drafting like Jarek McKinnon signs back with the Chiefs. And other days I don't touch him at all because – I really haven't he... drafted him. But, like, I think what we saw with him last year is he clearly – had some mystery Ill injury we just didn't know about. Because how do you go from being so used weeks, 14, 15? Like, th this is the guy winning fantasy championships for me. How do you go from that to, like, phased out in the playoffs? Well, remember when he was rested by the 49ers for having dead legs? Yes, dead leg McKinnon. Dead legs. That was what they listed him as, dead legs. That was, like, four years ago. He turns... 31 in May. I drafted a ton of McKinnon last year because I knew, you know, well, actually I was drafting him last year before I even resigned with the Chiefs. I was mixing him in this range, but I just felt like very confident that he would resign. The way he got phased out down the stretch makes me pretty nervous. And, and the fact that there's guys like Zeke and Fournette lurking. Yeah. I, I don't even know that like, you know, it, it might not even be like CEH who's on the roster. It might be like one of these random free agent guys, or it might be one of the very deep crop of rookies who comes and takes that role so it just feels a lot riskier to me than it did this time last year even i think we take deontay hardy and be done at wide out 
Uh, I like Deontay Hardy a lot. Let's get that correlation. All right. We have potentially one, two, three, four, five pass catchers from Josh Allen. And we potentially only have two if or three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have two for sure. We have three for sure. We have three for sure. Knox, oh, Hardy, sure. Diggs. Uh, okay. And then it's like maybe Hopkins, maybe the rookie. So what are you, what's your feeling on like over stacking? Cause one and this, I did it with a really weird team the other day. I went, uh, Justin Fields, DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet and Chase Claypool. Not which, a like, team I would overstack with. I, I, right. That was my thing. As I was like, as I was doing, I was like, this is probably something that people will be like, wow, that's really stupid. The bears aren't going to pass that much. But what I was, the reason I did it is because every one of those guys price reflects a you know projection or mental projection of a bears team that's going to be basically as run heavy as they were last year but if dj moore comes there if dj moore pays off with the with his price and fields his price then like mooney's underpriced claypool's way underpriced like comet's underpriced like they're all they all have like huge oh crap the bears are actually like just a regular run first offense not a historically run first offense and I think that's likely that. that it's much more likely we see the pass rate go up. Um, yeah, go up, go up to like not insane levels. That's all I'm asking for. And then the other thing is I was thinking like, OK, so then Fields Fields is winning it for you. What if he wins it for you in week 17 by throwing to Claypool and by throwing to Mooney and, you know, or Komet? And it's Komet and Claypool who you need in week 17. But DJ Moore had this awesome year because, you know, so yeah, yeah. I think it's actually kind of fun to overstack Clay, a little bit. The thing with Claypool is like, is it going to be shocking if they take JSN and it's like we never see Chase Claypool again? You know, like what? No, 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 that's true. I don't take a lot of Claypool. He was the one where I was like, I'm I'm being silly. Well, but <laughs> I, you know, with 20 rounds, you can get you can get weird with it. Like if yeah. you hit on a Josh Jacobs in your portfolio. You could advance anything, and then all you need is like the weeks to ping pong. So I don't, right. I don't hate. Um, so I kind of like Chuba Hubbard. I don't like Zach Evans very much. I, I don't. He's really the guy maybe him. who posted numbers today that are pretty good. I also, if we're gonna go three tight end, don't hate the division stack. Um, Chuba Chase Brown. Chase Brown's all right. I don't mind Chase Brown. Chuba I like because he's like the clear handcuff, and I don't think he's bad. Don't you think? They're gonna add someone in the draft. Yeah, I do. But that's the that's the worry about Chuba. He, I don't think he's bad though. You know, I think yeah. he he can play on passing downs. He's a he's a decent rusher. And also, like one of the things to temper your expectations a little bit with the rookies, because I think I draft a lot of these rookies, but this happens every year. Where like when Chuba Hubbard came out, we were like he could be anything, but then it's like, well. He's not great, but he's not terrible. That's what's the case for a lot of these guys are going to be like that. And when they do hit, they're going to hit in like year three because the starter ahead of them got hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we sometimes like lose like Chuba Hubbard was like an OK prospect who is now in a situation where if Sanders tweaks his ankle or they just decide he's a two down guy like Philly did, Hubbard could have decent playing time. And I think he's got contingent value right now. And probably has contingent value going the rest of the way because Sanders Sanders protects him in that sense, right? Like they're not going to draft they're not going to draft Charbonnet, right? That'd be so weird after giving Sanders that money. This is the news we got on Zach Evans today four four eight forty. I don't know if that sways you at all. <laughs> I, don't I mean, know it doesn't that, it doesn't hurt, but I don't. Think I don't know if that's even news. <laughs> but the um, the thing about Chuba is if the Panthers don't add anyone and he remains this this cost, I'm going to draft a lot of him. Uh, if they add Roshan Johnson and Chuba's on the practice squad, he, and, and the other thing about Chuba is like, he literally falls to the 20th round sometimes as does anyone yeah. in yeah. this range. Um, but we're talking about 18th round draft picks. It does not matter. Yeah. I guess and he if, just showed enough that I don't think in the efficiency stuff I look at, he actually popped a little bit. It's like a solid, like capable runner. Yeah. Um, and no, that's, we were that's, excited about him when he was CMC's backup a couple of years ago. And he was posting some usable stuff in the committee with Foreman. You yeah. Know? And then they, they, 
let Foreman go and, and get Sanders, but you know, well, I, I think, think Foreman was just priced out. Like Foreman is is yeah. good. Um, Foreman is pretty good, yeah. Okay. Where do you want to spend our picks? I think we have two more picks. running backs, yeah. We have probably one running back. Uh because we did a true zero running back, so I'd say one more running back. And we have two look we have at two tight goals. end, maybe if tight end you can always kind of tackle. Hit me on. with a deep cut at running back. Is, is McBride gone? Is Dwayne McBride gone? Hit me with the no, he's not. But hit me with Let's a do deep, Dwayne McBride. Okay, save your deep cut for the next pick. I want a name not drafted by the field. Some okay. rookie who this is Tyquan Thornton. This is name some surprise running back that went in round two. This is this person. All right. Um, we have reading off our running. I, I also think the dart at tight end would be fine, but uh, we have Mixon, Penny, Gibson, Tucker, Fournette, Ch- Hoop, Chubba, and Dwayne. And then we have Diggs, Hopkins, Lockett, Marquise. Yeah, I think we go. I think we throw the dart at running back, especially if, right. Mix, if Mixon gets um, suspended. We're going to 2882. So we want deep cut at running back. Evan Hall's not deep enough. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go even deeper. I'm surprised. Ch- and even some like running backs of yesteryear, like Kyron Williams is not getting drafted right now. Like these right. are like, like, and potentially the RB2 for the Rams. But uh, that's like a guy. I, see, that's a guy I wouldn't be looking to touch because he was like a very iffy prospect. He did not look very good last year. And they'll probably add somebody too. Who's the name of the other Rams running back that we drafted every year and is not getting drafted right now? Daryl Henderson. Henderson. What what happened? He's not on a team, right? I don't think he's on a team. Literally no ADP. Yeah, because he's not in the NFL currently. Checks in with the Cardinals three months (laughs) ago. Three months ago. That's his last blurb. That's not uh, great. That's rough. No, him and Eno, uh, there may be some. Let's see the sad Eno blurb. Yeah. There is none. Um, like Hassan Haskins is a guy who potentially could be literally the starter if Derrick Henry shipped out. Um, all right, where's your deep cut? All right, Kenny McIntosh. Let's let's go with him. Kenny Mac. Georgia commit Georgia committee back. Uh MC. Yeah. Georgia okay. committee back, really strong yards per route run, 2.04 yards per route run, which is great. It's like an elite number. Uh, not the biggest sample, but um, he only ran like 10 routes a game. But it's, and he's not athletic. <laughs> I'm really selling this, but he's got, uh, he's 210 pounds. He's six foot. And in that type of situation, the fact that he had the receiving efficiency shows they were willing to like at least try to get him the ball. This is and... Devin Singletary right here. Yeah. Which Devin Singletary has wiggle. I mean, we didn't get these numbers, but like these are his type of uh speed numbers, at least. He's and... kind of like discount Roshan Johnson. He was highly, highly graded by PFF. He's got enough size, he can catch, and he was a committee back. Um at a really big program. So, you know, fourth, like fourth, it. fifth round draft capital, maybe like, I don't, the other thing is like, he's, he's going to get drafted mostly. Like, I don't see, uh, I averaged some stuff together. I, so this projects like an one forty five is his draft capital. So and he's like a fifth round type of dude, but yeah, he's a tall, he's a taller Singletary. Yeah. Um, probably a little that. bit better of a pass catcher, but maybe it's like a Charles Sims or a Buck Allen. I know these are the most exciting comps ever, but you know he's not—he's not gonna be like that great. But maybe you know, trying to get you catches get a couple touchdowns for us. You should do, and we did it. So we ended with a two eight eight two: Josh Allen and Richardson, Mixon, Penny, Gibson, Sean Tucker, Fournette, Chuba Hubbard, Dwayne McBride, Kenny McIntosh, Diggs, Hopkins, Lockett, Marquise Brown, Bateman, Jalen Hyatt. DJ Chark, Deontay Hardy, and then Mark Andrews and Dawson Knox. I like the team. Pat, what is going on with you? What do you want to tell the people about? Uh, what's going on with me? Legendaryupside.com. You can sign up. Uh, you can get a $30 discount right now if your first year. Uh, 
if they go into the set, the link for that is legendary.com slash early $69 for the year. You can also uh, get a free 30 day trial I'm running right now. So you just go check out everything I've got and, you know, risk free and uh, free newsletter is also good. So if you just want to sign up for free, I have a lot of free content going out as well. And just launched the legendary upside podcast. As I mentioned, the episode with JJ, a lot more than just uh, some Izzy Abanacanda hype. We, we dove in to the wide receiver class, the top of the running back class, uh, some super flex takeaways, some best ball takeaways. So lots of good stuff there. And tonight on ship chasing, I should mention, we're doing a rookie mock draft. So we're going to have some guests and go through, I think like three rounds is what we're, tra- we're aiming to do. So it'll be, we'll get into the, some of the sleepers, some of the deep guys. I will be back at 4 p.m. today with Ian Howard. We're going to do a draft. We'll see where. Draft. If it's not filled, chill out, guys, so that we can do that. That's in two hours here. You do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I believe it's the the 4 p.m. stream for me is just going to be on my YouTube. If you're watching on Twitter, uh, have a great day, guys. See you at 4 p.m. Peace.